this video I'll share something very personal with you. Something about my early retirement journey. More specifically, I'll be diving into seven things that I would do very differently if I was starting my retirement journey again. Here are the seven mistakes that I made when I retired early. They're not severe regrets, more reflections, things that I would do very differently if I had my time again. I believe these things could enhance your retirement journey so that you don't make the same mistakes as me. When I first retired, I was thrilled by the freedom, but the reality of it was an overwhelming sense of lack of structure. This brings me to the first of my regrets. Number one, I had no retirement plan. I had no idea how I was going to spend my time. I had no investment strategy for my money. I had no idea if I was going to work ever again. At the end of the day, I was only 44, so there was a good chance that I might work again, despite the fact I saw this as retirement. What would my purpose be now that I was no longer working? What would I replace the work hours with? What was I passionate about? Looking back, I know now that I should have set clearer goals and planned activities that aligned with my passions. So my advice to you is to make a plan. Specifically, think about time and money. How are you going to spend your everyday time? Now that work no longer takes up most of your working hours, what are you going to replace those hours with? If you make a plan, the years that follow this early transition period will naturally fall into place. My second point is spending too much money. I spent way too much money in the early years of my retirement. I hadn't found a way to replace the work hours and I was bored. I filled those hours of boredom with buying stuff. I bought cars, watches, clothes, gadgets, you name it, I shopped for it. After all, how was I going to spend my hours? I wasn't working anymore and I hadn't figured out what I was going to do with those hours. Going shopping was an easy solution, especially online. I now know that my early years of extravagance were brought on by a loss of identity that I suffered after giving up work. I won't lie, buying new cars was fun initially, but I couldn't believe how quickly I got bored with them, which made me then want to get another new car. It's a vicious cycle and it's not one that I would advise anybody to get into. I learned that it's crucial to pace your spending, especially when you no longer have a steady income. That's why having a plan, as I discussed in point one, is absolutely crucial to pace yourself. Point number three is not focusing on my health. I didn't pay enough attention to my diet or my exercise routine in the years before retiring. And that bad habit just continued into my early retirement years. When I retired, I was 50 pounds heavier than I am now. I was also a yo-yo dieter. One of my best friends joked that every time he saw me, I seemed to be on a diet. And you know what? That was absolutely true. He was right. I tried every fad diet under the sun to shed the pounds. Keto, carnivore, 5-2 fasting, 16-8 fasting, you name it, I tried it. I've no doubt that all that yo-yo dieting led to my current health problems. If you followed any of my videos, you'll know that I'm currently suffering gallbladder problems. I've got gallstones and I'm waiting to have an operation to remove my gallbladder. It's only in the last year that I've switched to a healthy, balanced diet. It took gallbladder pain to finally kick me into action. Who would have thought that just reducing your diet so that it incorporates 10% fat would have had such a profound effect? But it did. It forced me into cutting out red meat and processed foods and replacing them with healthy proteins, veggies and fruit. That simple, eh? I wish I'd known. On reflection, with plenty of time on my hands, I could have sought the advice of a personal trainer or a nutritionist, but I didn't. I just carried on the usual cycle of overeating, diet, overeat, diet, you get it. It's much easier to enjoy retirement if you're fit and healthy. Visiting tropical countries when you're three stone overweight is not a good experience, I can tell you that. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the travelling, but I didn't make it any easier on myself by being overweight and unhealthy. Part of the plan that I raised in point number one should be to sort out your health. You should plan your exercise, plan your nutrition, preferably with expert help. The fourth thing that I regret is that I didn't think about the impact of my retirement on others, specifically my wife. One of the biggest challenges I faced was adjusting to spending more time with my wife. Yeah, I know, who would have thought that? We hadn't really discussed how our relationship would change and once I was home daily it led to some friction as we adapted to spending more time together. Communication beforehand could have eased this transition. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed spending time with her, just not all the time. As an introvert, I need quite a lot of personal space, which I chose by locking myself away in my home office all day, busying myself on my computer. 
rather than choosing healthy options as I discussed earlier. I now go on long solo walks in nature, but I didn't back then. My wife's life continued as normal. She had a routine, a close circle of friends who she spent time with on a regular basis. In reality, I was disrupting that. I was disrupting her, she wasn't disrupting me. Plus I didn't realise how often her parents visited the house. They're lovely people, but I'd never seen so much of them. If you're in a relationship, don't expect your other half to fall in line with your new regime. They've got a life that doesn't involve you. You need to understand that. It's you who needs to adapt rather than them. You should discuss your impending retirement with them and make a plan together as to what you will do together and how you'll fit in with their routine. Stick to that plan and let them have their life. Knowing you're not intruding will make your relationship better. That's certainly what I found. My fifth point is adapting to change. I went from managing a large team and the stresses of business life to figuring out what to do with my day. Initially that just resulted in me hanging around all day in the house, as mentioned earlier, locked away in my home office, often still in my pyjamas until the middle of the afternoon. I spent hours on my laptop busying myself with nothing much really, organising my record collection, sorting out my digital files. Those certainly weren't mentally stimulating things to be doing. As I mentioned earlier, I wasn't getting any exercise, I was overeating. The impact on my mental health was disastrous. All brought on because I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what I was going to do next or how I wanted to spend my time. I just drifted from day to day. It was such a contrast from my work life, which was structured, planned and hectic. So I just wasted that most precious commodity that we all have, time. It took me six months to snap out of it. I'll explain how in my next point. And that point is socialising. In the early years of my retirement, I didn't socialise enough. I went from seeing dozens of people every day in working life to hardly seeing anybody, just my wife. Living in a rural area didn't help. I had to drive everywhere, so I didn't bother. I just stayed at home, locked in my home office, being busy. In my first year after retiring, I didn't make enough effort to meet new people. Even introverts like me need social interaction. I snapped out of it by putting myself out there. I accepted invitations to some events that were being run by some alumni groups that I was part of. I won't lie, it scared the bejabers out of me because I'm an introvert and I hate large gatherings, especially with strangers, but needs must. It was the best thing that I could have done. I ended up making new friends and I was also presented with new business and work opportunities. I'll discuss more of that in my next point. So the tip I'll give you on this one is that be brave, put yourself out there, don't be frightened of meeting new people, even if you're an introvert like me. My final point, number seven, is poor work choices. I regret the work choices that I made. And yes, I did say work choices. I made the decision that even though I was retired, I would do some work. I wanted to try and use my knowledge in some positive way. However, I chose to do a role that didn't play to my strengths and it was in an area that I had no real passion for. This led to frustration and I quickly became discouraged when it didn't go as fast as I wanted it to. Now, I am still working a few hours a week in a field that I'm passionate about, which aligns perfectly with my experiences and skills. It's fulfilling and it keeps me engaged. So I urge you to give some thought to this question. Are you still going to work even though you're retired? And by that, I mean, are you going to do some part-time work? A lot of people choose to do this to keep their mind sharp and as a way of meeting people. Think about the things that you do like about work rather than the things that you don't that are making you think about retiring. For example, the social aspect. How are you going to replace that in your newly retired life? Once the exciting early phase of retirement is over, if you have a lot of useful work knowledge, do you really want to never use it again? That was the question facing me. Think about how you can use it without necessarily returning to full-time work. You might find a way of using your knowledge on a part-time basis, one that fits in with your new lifestyle. That's what I did. So there you have it, seven mistakes that I made that hopefully you can avoid. The big takeaway for me that I've learned in the last 19 years of retirement is, retirement is a process. It's not just a single date, it's a series of phases. I went from the initial excitement to feeling lost before gradually finding new ways to contribute and feel fulfilled. Recognising this earlier would have prepared me for the emotional roller coaster of retiring. I'll wrap up this video by just saying to you, retirement is more than just financial preparation. It's also about planning to enable personal fulfilment and being ready for life's unpredictabilities. Each of these regrets taught me valuable lessons that I now embrace fully. Whether you're planning to retire by 50 or just dreaming about it, 
consider these reflections. Plan thoughtfully, focus on financial stability, health, relationships, and personal growth, remembering that every phase of life offers opportunities to grow. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, remember to make every second count.